how the tables have turned. After rebuilding all of these crazy supercars, these fast cars, this was bound to happen to me at some point and it's happened to my Gallardo. So before I explain how this happened and what I'm gonna do about it, I think I should show you what happened. Oh my God. I can't believe this just happened. Literally it's wet and uh, I just completely lost control of the car, like completely lost control of it. Oh no, it's so bad. I don't even know how I'm gonna, I've hit that post. Hit that post, I think. Oh. I just literally, I weren't even going fast as well. I just come out, I've got slicks on and it's wet. I don't know what I'm gonna do here. I don't know how I'm gonna get out myself. I don't know how I'm gonna get out. Oh dear, man. It's 20 past 12 in the morning. Um, I just had a call from Matt. I'm so shaken up. He's just said that he's had an accident and his car is in the ditch. We've just left the unit, working late. What's it now? 20 past, 20 past 12, midnight. Um, it's a bit wet outside, it's raining. We've been working on the Lambo and uh, I've just got home, just got into bed. Matt rang me. Matt never rings me unless there's something up. Um, well, he says it's okay, so hopefully it's all right, but he says the car, the car's gone. I don't, I well, I'm glad I'm not hurt. I didn't hurt anybody else. I knew, I knew it was death in the wet. I knew it was death, but it literally just snapped. Yeah, I'm good. Just on the phone to please. What have you done, Matt? A uh, slight accident. So now the reality's setting in on what's just happened to the Gallardo. Some of the residents have come out of the houses to see if I was okay, and somehow I've been untouched. But the car, on the other hand, looks a complete mess. I was on the phone to the police to see what was the next step. And then Hannah showed up. Oh, there's the rest of it. There's a street light down. This is not ideal at all. Um, I know I'm good. Like now, I'm at the other end of what's what happens. Oh, you're at my end now. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. at my end. So no normally, normally, I buy the cars that have been crashed. This time, my only car, which I've like, is not been crashed. I've crashed it. Um, have you looked around that side yet? It, oh, is it bad? Come with me. This was my first ever Lamborghini. Oh no. I got out this way. Oh no. This was my first ever Lamborghini. Yeah. Do you want to look at the rear end? Oh. Have you seen the rear end yet? It's so bad, isn't it? I don't even know what, I don't even, I can't even think what I'm going to do. And shortly after, the police showed up. But as time went on, I just realised how lucky I actually was. You can see marks on the tree down there. Lamborghini that you've restored and sadly crashed. <laughs> Do you know the funny thing is? Well, it's not funny. This is the one Lamborghini that wasn't funny. crashed. I bought it uncrashed. Oh man, so you've crashed And it. now it's crashed. Right. So you're going to have to fix it. Yeah, it's... Um... I can't recognise, I've just see I'm sure I've watched, I've watched your TikTok, <laughs> really. Right, Are you okay, first? Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know how. No. I literally don't know how. <laughs> I, I just don't, I don't know. Was it just yourself in the car? Yeah, just me in the car. Okay. And you're not injured or anything like that? No, no, no. I just grazed my knee pride. getting out. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I got out and I got like got a bit of thorn in my knee, but <laughs> other than that, I'm all right. So between us and the police, we've now got to work out how we're going to get this car out of the ditch, and then what's next. I don't want to necessarily leave it. If it was, we're going to have to get the truck. Car, then I'd be like, okay, yeah, sort it in another yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, but yeah, for yeah. For what it is, it's a 
you. Do I get the recovery truck? It's got the winch on it. Has it got anything, any cars on it? No. on. You've ruined my night now, Matt. <laughs> well, I think I've ruined mine. <laughs> So the original plan was to get my recovery truck and try and pull it out. But due to where it was, I didn't think that was going to be possible. So the police called for recovery themselves. And we just had to wait. No airbags went to what, like... Passenger any... seat's gone. Thank God my passenger's okay. Just <laughs> <laughs> say go on. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, yeah. Oh, zero. There we go. Here we go. I'm prepared for more damage when this. I think, up. yeah, I think you've got to be at this point because like uh, it, it's going to happen in it. Does it have to go back to? Oh, I knew you are. If I like Rolls Royce, do you need that football ride? <laughs> <laughs> I know, this is karma for me, isn't it? Yeah. This is karma for me. <laughs> okay, so we can't move it yet because there's a, a, a BT telephone pole. I don't know, who'd put that pole there? Do you know, like health and safety in yeah. Europe, you can't touch anything until we've had a risk assessment. You need it. risk assessment, method statement, and then you need like supervisors to come down and double check it yeah and then they'll send one of their supervisors to come and double check it yeah and then they'll ring somebody else who'll send their supervisor to come and check it yeah so here's the thing because the car had taken out that telegraph pole and it was literally hanging by the wires we couldn't move the car so the police had to call someone from the telecom company to come and check it first and they were going to be at least an hour and 40 minutes 20 past 20 Eventually, they turned up. Next plan was to get this post off the car. Okay, plan now is to cut that post down, but we think it might go onto the car. So the guy's disconnecting the wires from the telegraph pole, and hopefully he can move it away without causing more damage. It. It. Oh, what a guy. <laughs> Good morning! <laughs> Got our firewood now. Burn off. Here we go. Yeah. Right, let's climb across. Very sophisticated getting over there, Matt. Now I've got to get the ignition on and knock the car into neutral so it's easier to pull out. Right, I'm in neutral. Oh, it says I've got rear left brake light out. Over to you. It's down to... Oh. <laughs> oh. This is now where really we're going to get to see the full extent of the damage. And the more I see the car, the more I realised how lucky I was. I think something definitely was watching over me this night. Lamborghini very bad? Yeah, very bad. Very bad. Right. So we've got to get it onto the recovery truck now and we're going to go straight back to my unit. There's not much running through my head at the minute in terms of what I'm going to do with the car. I'm just thankful for all the people that came out that night on call to come and help. Right, in the recovery truck. Luckily, I'm not far from the unit. So we're going to get this Gardo cover back and check it out. It was £1,400 to get the car 10 minutes down the road. I could have gone America on a return flight for that. And my needs must. <laughs> Just go full throttle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Oh my. Look at this wheel. <laughs> Someone check that back left wheel. Oh my days. 
<laughs> that looks so bad. I'm right now, like I'm actually getting teary. This is sad, isn't it? Well, this is one of my favourite cars he owned, and it now looks like this. It's a shame you can't drive in the rain, isn't it? You just can't drive in general. <laughs> <laughs> what do I think? It's made a mess, isn't it? Right. Now let me explain how this happened. First thing, I never drive this car in the wet. Number one, it's a thousand horsepower. Number two, it's rear wheel drive. And number three, I've got semi-slick Nankang AR1s on the back, which, well, it is, you basically might as well give up. It's like driving in the snow. But on that day when I left my house, it was dry. And I was just heading to the unit to put on some new drop links to the rear suspension, as it needed doing. And at the bottom, it seems to have perished. Oh yeah. The thing is, when we was fitting these, we noticed it started to hammer it down with rain. We even filmed it. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit raining. Yeah, it's raining. So I've left the unit and it is absolutely throwing it down. But I'm not going to kid you guys, I don't rebuild these supercars and enjoy driving them slow. I do enjoy driving them fast, that's the whole reason why I buy fast cars. But at this actual point, it's throwing it down and I can't drive it fast. fast. It's impossible to drive it fast. Liam was behind me in his van and we're doing the speed limit. Liam turns off to go to his house. And the last thing I remember is heading out of this 30 zone into a 50 zone. Here we are, at the scene. <laughs> Bear in mind, this was about 12 o'clock at night and it's throwing it down with rain and this road is empty. I'm going that way, come out of here and it's wet. I'm like, there's no point in sending it because it's wet anyway, but I'm in second gear. I remember being in second gear. As I'm accelerating in second gear, I've gone to change into third. And as I changed it into third, the car snapped me to go in that way. The last thing I remember is facing that. And because I've panicked and I'm like, well, I don't fancy hitting that, I've turned left. Worst thing about all of this is that when I check the car out on car vertical, it is the cleanest check you can get. Everything clear. There's no outstanding finance. There's no um, mileage fraud. And at the minute, there's no damage unless we go for insurance, which we'll get onto later in the video. Well, and you can see, look here, the previous owner, you see how many miles he did in one year? He used to go 6,315 miles to 6,690 miles. He, he, he did 300 miles a year in it. Then look when I took over. <laughs> At least I drove the car. At least I drove the car. Because the car hasn't gone for insurance, it doesn't show on the car vertical check that it's been damaged. But if you checked your car out on there and it has had a previous accident and if it's been sold for a salvage auction, you may even be able to see the photos of the cash damaged car on the car vertical check. You can see it on the screen now like this car here. And it will also show you what category the car was and the date it got categorised, which is really interesting. You can check your car out with a link in the description box below and with using code MAT on the screen now, you get 20% off that check. Let me explain this crash a little bit further. I've avoided that. Turned here, this is... Oh, is that my headlight? What is that? There was a lamppost here. You're joking. Yeah, this is... <laughs> That's what you hear. Yeah, so there was a lamppost here. I honestly don't know what's happening. I've gone blank here, but I think the front right's hit this lamppost. We can see it on the, on the bonnet. You see a perfect hole. I think then I've spun in backwards, but I don't know. If you wouldn't have had a lamppost here, you would have gone down there, yeah. four pouts straight. Yeah. That would have been a bad day. Perish, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's oh. bad. Oh, no, look, and I've hit that tree over there. Oh, my. Honestly, I don't know how it's got this far. We're, we're still going further down. And then there were some lines. And there was another telegraph pole here. I've hit that telegraph pole. Come down. Before finally finishing here which is slightly on the uh, on the angle but how have you hit that tree look how far away i don't know how i've hit that tree i don't know that's the part that confuses me like if you had hit there swerved and gone in here that would have made and sense. the right side of the car isn't damaged but how have you hit that lamppost down there hit that tree and then made it to here i honestly don't know but one thing i know for sure going back to that accident scene 
I was insanely lucky. I drive fast cars pretty much every day and they are dangerous. And I guess this was just a reality check. At any moment, they can just bite you and everything can be changed in an instant. Which now brings me back to here. 1,400 pound down from the recovery, two lamp posts and a telegraph pole, which I'm still yet to have the bill for. But the good news is, I haven't hit anyone and I'm completely fine. I don't know how I'm fine. But there's no airbags on actually on the steering wheel or the um, dashboard. And I, th I feel like if I rebuilt this, people will be saying like, oh, he didn't rebuild it properly because the airbags didn't go off. It's just look at the drawer, I guess. <laughs> First thing as well, I know what everyone's going to say. Oh, you can't drive. If I've lost control of a rear wheel drive at 1,000 horsepower, Lamborghini Gallardo with semi slicks on in the wet, and that means I can't drive. Then I can't drive. I can't, like, that's it. I admit it. I can't drive. Any words? You can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> I DNF'd on the way home, basically. <laughs> Track limits DNF'd. So now I'm in a bit of a predicament. The plus side of this is that everything is all insured. So all of the turbo kits insured, all of the modifications are insured, but that's also a downside to this whole situation as well, because if I go and claim through insurance, I will get a payout for the car, but then I lose my Gallardo, which has got like huge sentimental value to me. Now, if the insurance do pay out for the car, but then the car gets a category N or a category S status, then I will have the option to buy the car back, which is a possibility. The problem is, is if the car gets a category B status. What I'm worried about is the insurance come out, they check the damage and they say it's a category B car, which means I just lose the car. Like I'll get a full payout, which is great, but I want the car. I can't, I can't buy the car back from the insurance. Another issue, what the insurance has said as well, if I touch this car, even if I have it in the ramp or I start taking off a part or anything, if I seem molesting it or making it different to how it was from the accident, the insurance is immediately invalid. Like even taking this part off here could invalidate my insurance if they find something is different from the insurance from the moment it's crashed. So I literally cannot touch the car because my insurance is invalid. So we've got a decision that I've got to make on whether I've got to decide right now, am I going to repair this car or I'm gonna take the easier route, which is just go for insurance, let it be, and then the guardo has gone and it's done. So it's not even like I can put this car in the ramp and assess the damages and see myself whether I think this car's a category B. But we can see a lot of the damage without the ramp. Front bumper's gone, bonnet's gone, and there is a perfect hole <laughs> where I've hit a lamppost there. Wing's gone, this part of the frame has gone. I can see the subframe underneath has gone. Headlights gone, other headlights broken, air suspension's collapsed, front wing's gone, wing mirror gone, rear quarter definitely gone, back left suspension gone, turbo return, the oil return line for the turbo's gone, this part of the frame gone, boot lid gone, wing gone, rear light gone, other rear light gone. Yeah, there's a there's a lot which is gone. How have you managed to not damage this side? I honestly don't know how this, uh, like the crazy thing is, is that how I'm not injured, I do not know. Like, we've seen how all these Lamborghinis are built. It's, we think, generally, they ain't built, like, fantastic there, but s the safety of it must be good because I ain't, like, I know the airbags haven't gone off, but maybe the airbags would have gone off if I was going a little bit faster, but, I, like, I'm literally not, I've not even got whiplash, look. I've got more whiplash getting out of bed. If they have to replace the exhaust and you know, some of the turbos and say, say you're in it 20 grand just from the turbo kit, then you've got to go for all four wheels, which they're, like, 10 grand. You've got a rear quarter. It's category B, like, there's no doubt about it. Did the insurance guy say it was 60% of the value of the car to category B, or was it 40%? Either way, it's covered. Either it. way, it's over <laughs> it. What's the car worth? 100? Yeah, I'd say 100 grand. Around that. I reckon it's 60 grand at least. 60 grand, that's just looking at it and not looking at the damages underneath. But can we repair it under 60,000 pounds? We've done it before, but do, is it worth it when I can just take a payout? I think that we've got to make this decision between me and you guys, and we've got to make it fast. So this could be the final chapter of my Lamborghini Gallardo. But what a story it's been. I'll always remember picking up my first Lamborghini. What? I don't even know what to say. It's
then modifying it, adding the turbos to it, and it's had so many trips and experiences. Good ones and bad ones. Sometimes it's not really about the car. It's more about the sentimental value of that car, the journey of it, and all the memories that you have around it. I guess that's what makes petrol heads, petrol heads. Thank you, Lamborghini Gallardo. Did you really think I was gonna let the insurers touch this car? They do say if you're not crashing, you're not trying hard enough. Yeah, you're not you're not going fast enough. No. All the best drivers crash, you see. Crash Max Verstappen doesn't crash. Yeah, I think he went 51 G's into the wall at Silverstone. That was Lewis Hamham's fault though. Yeah, this was the tree's fault. Yeah. Like 